Welcome to this next installment of HDU Community Stories. I'm Jenna Heilman, Executive Director of the Huntington's Disease Youth Organization, and I am honored to have three amazing women and maybe a fourth one will join us who are going to share a little bit about how they have gotten involved by doing a fundraiser to support the Huntington's disease community. I know that especially this time of year with Giving Tuesday coming on and you're in giving and some other things and holiday times and uh, there are a lot of times that people want to get further involved, raise funds, uh, celebrate major milestones or anything like that, but it's always a little bit intimidating for how to get started. And uh, it's actually quite simple. And I think that it's important to hear from people who have done this before so they can help share their tips, what they did, how they, how they planned everything and, and uh, to really inspire others to do similar things. So I'm gonna start off by letting them introduce themselves. So I'll start with Charlotte. Hi everyone, my name's Charlotte. Um, I'm from the Northeast of the UK um, near a place called Newcastle. Um, and yeah, it's amazing to be on the call. And Caitlin? I'm Caitlin. I am from Toronto, Canada, and um, I'm so excited to be on the call today. Welcome. And Robin? Hi, everyone. My name is Robin. I currently live in the UK, Liverpool, and yeah, I'm excited to be on. Amazing. And just a little bit of background, and again, feel free to share as much or as little as you'd like. But I think it's always important to um, to share a little bit about what your relationship is to the Huntington's disease community. Um, so I'll start off, I'll go in the same order. So Charlotte. Um, so my mum currently has Huntington's disease. She's in the middle stages of the condition. And we actually lost my nan in December 2021. She also had the condition. So um, I'm a carer and I'm also at risk. So I don't currently don't know um, my Huntington's disease status, I suppose, um, but have been going through testing since I was 18. So I've been seeing a counsellor since I was 18 and will probably know um, quite soon um, whether I'm gene positive or not. But yeah, that's, I suppose, my connection to Huntington's disease. Thank you so much for sharing that. And Caitlin? Uh, I come from an HD family. Uh, my family... Uh, operates a little bit close to the vest. We like to keep our privacy a little bit, um, maybe more than most. And so uh, that's kind of what I'm comfortable sharing. But uh, yeah, it's an immediate family member and uh, we're all tight knit and uh, helping one another out. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that that's um, very similar to many people in the community who prefer not to share as outwardly as others, which is absolutely fine. And, and we're here to support in the same way. Robin? Um, so my dad tested positive um, with Huntington's about 12 years ago um, and then obviously I went in for the test um, and tested positive about three months before I turned 21. Um, so yeah, that was about 10 years ago now. Um, so yeah, I am gene positive and my brother also is and then I've got a couple of aunties and uncles as well who have it as well. Thank you for sharing. I think it's um, amazing for you all that you contribute in so many different ways and, um, and offer to share what you can with your story. So thank you. Um, I also wanted to start off by having you all share a little bit about what your fundraiser was. And I'll let you all kind of just chime in and chat, but what was your fundraiser? What did you decide to do? <laughs> don't mind so my most recent fundraiser I've done I think four fundraisers um so my most recent one was that me and three other um young girls impacted by HD climbed the three biggest peaks in the UK so we climbed Ben Nevis, Scarfell Pike and we climbed I can't even remember Snowden there you go that's the other one <laughs> <laughs> we climbed the three mountains over three days um and yeah it was really cool and we I hadn't met before um online so we all met online just via I suppose HDO and sharing our stories 
Um, I've also done a half marathon. I've done a skydive and done other stuff with my mum as well. So, yeah. Um, but the I suppose the Three Peaks Challenge was the most recent to date. And what made you want to start to do a fundraiser? I know you've done several, but what was really the inspiration for you to to do that? Um, so I suppose with my first one, like my first, I suppose, inspiration was that I was looking after my nan and I was seeing her deteriorate and getting really unwell and I felt like quite powerless and I felt like there was nothing much I could do with the situation and I suppose fundraising gave me that bit of power back to say actually I'm going to make a positive impact in some way to other families impacted by HD um, and I'd also obviously received support from the charities that I've raised money from so you know HDO or the HDA here in the UK um, and I really felt like I wanted to give back so yeah I suppose that was what inspired me to make to make me want to to fundraise and I suppose spread awareness as well I know everybody has is comfortable with different levels of sharing but um, I'm a bit of an oversharer and always have been so um, yeah I, I don't know wanted to share like I suppose with the world that this was an awful disease but I wanted to share that the there's something positive that can be done with it if that makes sense and I think it inspired it can inspire other people to do the same so yeah it, it gives you a lot back in a sense of purpose and belonging in a community as well absolutely thank you for that and Caitlin your fundraising is something that you do uh, really especially during the holidays but a little bit year-round as well tell a little bit about what you do and how and what inspired you to get more involved with this fundraiser Absolutely. So I, um, I have a little greeting card company that I run that is called Grandpa Stamps, uh, and I send uh, a portion of the sales to the HCYO. And it started, I'm like a stationary nerd. I love paper and pens and ink and like anything to do with that. And when COVID happened, I found myself with all this free time and I had always lo loved making greeting cards for people. And so I just started making greeting cards on reflex to like send to check in. How are you doing? Are you okay? Um, and so I started making these greeting cards and then I uh, at the same time happened to run a Facebook fundraiser. And I did a thing where it was like, if you if you donate, I'll send you a greeting card that I made. Um, and I got some really nice feedback on the greeting cards. And then I kind of thought like, oh, and very similarly um, to what Charlotte was just saying, the the uh, finding of a purpose and being able to kind of um, uh, feel a bit more empowered and feel like there's a way to combine all like I love stationery and I love um, connecting people through greeting cards and then to bring in the element of being part of the, the HDBio community and getting to like add that to, to the mix. Also, it just felt like this really beautiful intersection and somewhere that I could work that felt really like closely aligned to my purpose and what I wanted to do. So it was this dovetailing of things and, um, and the holiday cards, I figured people are going to be spending money anyways around the holidays. And so what better way than to just kind of draw some of that uh, in. And so I started making these holiday cards and I had my my grandfather's uh, stamp set. And so I make all the, the design, the cards with his stamps. Uh, and it I took a chance and I got a bunch of them printed and I emailed out to my friends and family and said, I'm doing this thing. And and uh, please support and and people came back with wonderful support it was a great response so um it kind of took off and this is the third year that i'm doing a, a holiday run of cards so it's that's been amazing. wonderful that's amazing and i think that that's really something that's important is that sometimes people think that fundraising has to which is great if it this is but sometimes people can be a little bit um overwhelmed if they're thinking about doing a big challenge or anything like that um so even taking something uh, like a hobby or an interest in turning that into a mechanism to show your support. And you're also raising awareness um, and about Huntington's disease, which I think is so important for anything that we do. Thank you for that. Now, Robin, you are getting ready to do your fundraiser. You're yeah. right in the thick of things. So uh, you are one of those people who loves the challenge. Tell us about what you're doing. So I will be climbing Kilimanjaro in February next year. So I've been training since August. So training's going well, but 
um, yeah, as it's getting closer, I'm getting a bit more nervous and a bit more apprehensive about the climb, but I'm really, really, really excited. And it's kind of, I booked onto it um, just because other friends have booked on online um, with a walking group that we do. And then it just, as soon as I booked it, I was like, you know what, like, I just I just felt right to like, obviously do it for charity and there wouldn't be any of the charity that I would have chose for Huntington's. Um, and I think more so but obviously it's obviously I was trying to raise money and raise awareness um obviously you know dad is you know he's really deteriorated a lot over the last couple of years and I felt like I felt like for so long we were getting pushed up against you know staff and nurses and different people who were looking after him who had no idea about the Huntington's or how he needs to be cared for or you know what level of care he needed um, and that was even down to like, you know, his GP and his doctor. And I felt like every time we were going somewhere, it was us trying to educate the staff. So that's what I, obviously the main reason why I wanted to get more awareness about it was for. But then like the biggest reason that obviously I wanted to do it was because I wanted to kind of like, just I wanted something de to dedicate towards dad's life. You know, he's obviously like getting to the very end of his condition and his illness and he's in like the very final stages now. So I just kind of wanted something to just like as a, as a as a dedication to what he's been through and how, how much he's been through and how strong he's been and what it's meant for me to be with him through it all. So yeah, this is a, a dedication to his life. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. And what a tribute that's going to be, I'm sure, an incredibly emotional yeah. journey on all Different. That's what I said. I said to the girls who were going, I went, I it's six days on a mountain, so I'll just be crying every day. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, all I'll be doing is happy crying or sad crying. <laughs> I think that that's totally expected and normal. And uh, yeah, I think. And what made you pick Kilimanjaro? Because um, it was just like I, I I'm in a walking group and with obviously people in the in 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 Liverpool and they put it up saying that they were doing a hike and I mean one of my really good friends had booked on and I seen it and I was like it's bucket list it's always something I've wanted to do so I just booked it um and I, I can't no, do you ever feel like for something like the universe is asking you to do something and when I seen it I was like I've got to do this like I, I just it felt like I had to be there for some reason unknown and obviously this is probably what it was for. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Well, thank you. Thank you all so much for sharing a little bit about what you're doing and um, and some of your inspiration behind it. Um, so one of the other things I think that people kind of get a little bit concerned with is, are people going to care about this? Are they going to support? Or am I just going to be doing something on my own? And it's, maybe not going to raise as much money as I thought it was going to. Those are some real concerns. So open for anybody. We don't have to go in order, but yeah, I think, what, I think what, were some of, I, what were some of the things that you all did um, to share the information? Um, what were some of the things that were unexpected that came out of it? I think those feelings are always going to be there at the start. Like, you know, we think, you know, I'm, 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 are people going to get involved? Is like, what's it going to be like? Am I going to get enough support? You know, all these things. And what I've realised is that no matter what I've raised money for or what it's been for, no matter I, or over the years of different things, people always want us to give, want a gift, want a gift to other people. Do you know what I mean? People always, you know, even if they're struggling or they haven't got a lot of money, like there's the support that you get is it's overwhelming. I actually cried one day because, like, someone from the from the US donated a thousand dollars and like. I'd never even met them before. And I'd just spoken briefly to this girl on Instagram because she'd seen a story. She's got Huntington's in her family. And then she donated and she put the, the link into her family group chat or something. And her nan donated a thousand dollars. And I was just wow. like, you know, like just like from one conversation with one person on Instagram about, and obviously they've got it in their family. And she was like, you know, this is this is really important to us. And I, I was crying <laughs> because people like people want to I think people want to really help and give to give to things that are important. I found with mine that the um, 
the I had a few people who were quite close to me, aunts and dear friends who kind of became the first core support people. I think my my initial concerns were I'm going to have these cards printed and no one's going to care or how am I going to spread the word or are people going to think they're one of the things I was concerned about as I started to kind of do the um, doing the numbers on it and figuring out like what I was going to have to sell the cards for and is that going to be too much is it going to be too expensive is it and and I found that um, th similarly people are just so uh, supportive especially if they in my case if they knew me personally and kind of knew a little bit the story they were right there with me um, and then I had this kind of core group of like an aunt and some friends that were like kind of my five or six people that really supported every time I would come out with a new design or new something they were right there and it kind of gave me the confidence to keep going and keep expanding. And then it's been, uh, yeah, it's been into year three and my network has just kind of been growing um, each year. And I think it's when I first started, I, I also had that same fear of it's not gonna raise enough money or is it gonna be worth all of the work? And in terms of the raising enough money, of course I wish it raised more, but even when I can send small amounts it still makes me feel like i'm contributing in some way and and then um oh sorry i lost my train of thought for the for the second bit um but uh yeah it's it's it has been oh yes and i i've learned so much from doing it and just kind of diving in and biting off little bits as i go and trying new things and so it's been rewarding not just from the uh, how I expected that that it might be, but it's kind of bridged into all sorts of other things and skills and people and yeah, so it's it's growing, which is really fun to feel. Yours is almost entrepreneurial too, so you're right with some of those skills building and you know trying to figure out cost analysis yeah. and shipping and and you know international shipping and all of those things too. Yeah, yeah, it's been a journey, but uh, but it's been great. Um, so I suppose I, I, when I did first did my fundraiser, I was 18. So I was, I think a bit, the naivety probably helped me in that, like, I don't really think I probably worried about what people thought because I was just so young and, and, and was so, I don't know, stuck in our situation. I just wanted to make a change. But I think now when I share my story, I do worry and we're well, not worried, but I am apprehensive. I'm always like, oh, well, you know, people gave last time, so I feel bad asking them again. Or, you know, I've shared my link, you know, too many times. Like, I feel like I'm pestering people. But I think like like the other girls have said, it, you're blown away by people's generosity and support and people really connect to other people. Um, and I think that's what people buy into. It's not necessarily like, yeah, it's not necessarily the what you're doing or I don't think that that necessarily matters I think they people just buy into you and buy into like wanting to help you and wanting to help others um but yeah I've always been ridiculously blown away by people's generosity and I always say whenever I share it like even if people can't give like if you could share or if you could you know just read about the disease or read about about our story and and then I've received so many messages from people like I didn't even know what HD was but like I know what it is now and to me that means more than anything um so yeah I've learned so much and obviously with in the summer when I met the girls that was like as go as far as to say life-changing like I never actually spent time with people who were impacted by Huntington's disease and we spent three days together just talking and we were all impacted by it so differently um and yeah it was just like really empowering to like listen to others like talk about the same things that I go through in my mind all the time and it yeah, it was really great. And we would have never met if it wasn't for the fundraising or we might have met, but we would have never spent that time together or that, you know, walking up a mountain, like however many thousand feet talking about the struggles or, you know, or that doctor said this, or, you know, my mum does this or your dad does. And it's just sharing things on and sharing really happy memories too. There was, we all shared that we'd lost loved ones from it. And that was really nice that we could a bit like what Robin said in terms of like honoring her dad, like honor their lives in such a poignant way. Um, but yeah, it's it's just it brings so many things that you'd never even consider at the start. It like it, there's so many different aspects to fundraising rather than just raising the money. Um, 
Absolutely. And I think that some of the, the key takeaways on here too about kind of that honoring loved ones who are currently present on this earth and then those that we hold in our hearts and our thoughts, it's nice to be able to think about them and to be able to do something in their memory. And I think especially those who we've lost the fear of not remembering or forgetting um, is, is really there. And so to have something tangible that, that makes you kind of take a break from everyday life and really focus on something um, that brings such joy to your heart and, uh, and just paying tribute is so powerful. And I think too, echoing a lot what you said. Um, so I actually did a fundraiser a few weeks ago. I ran a 10K and raised funds for HDO. And I don't have a personal connection to Huntington's disease, but to go off of people giving money to people, uh, people gave because they know that I'm passionate about the community and because it's such a, a cause close to my heart. And I was really shocked at the responses. And um, we even had our anniversary party. Uh, my husband and I had our anniversary party. And instead of gifts, we asked for donations and raised a bunch of money that way. And so those are some small things too that people yeah. can do is think about yeah. like Facebook fundraising for birthdays or Instagram or celebrations, uh, going to trivia night and doing something, doing a bowling competition. I mean, there's so many different things that can be really fun to do for fundraising. And, uh, and, and you'll be amazed because people get so inspired, like with Robin's story um, and all of your stories uh, to give because it's such an, an important cause to everybody. Yeah, that's what I feel like. I think when, when mostly what I think is when you're sharing your story, people, can see that it's genuine and that it's like really important to you so I think like they, they will no matter what what it is mm -hmm. no matter how big or small people always want to get involved and I think too um people I think some of the hesitancy is is kind of like what Charlotte said which was you you almost get worried about oversaturating them with asks or even the fear of someone saying, no, I can't give, but they're not going to be mad at you for asking because you're doing it for such an important cause. So I, I think that you kind of have to get through some of those initial fears and, and just get past it. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. I know I have really had that fear of oversaturating uh, because my network is kind of, you know, finite to a certain extent. But what I found was that I just kind of kept going and kept posting and then I would have people come in like at the end of the second year of running things and they would say oh I'm finally getting around to, to supporting I've seen it for the last while I haven't had a chance but he now is my chance I'm going to get in there so it's a it's a nice feeling that it's people are not going oh there you're still you're still doing that they're like oh you're still doing that that's great I'm now I can participate so So then just to kind of dive in a little bit more about sharing with the community, what are some of the ways that you all did that? Did you use social media, um, just in meetings or in support groups, or how did you, how did you share within your community? And then even so, if that, did it even expand past your immediate community to even more people? And we kind of talked a little bit about this, but I'm interested for the mechanism. Yeah, I think social media is like, I get so much you know, bad, bad, bad news and people like hating on it all the time. But I think when it comes to things like this, it's really, really amazing. You like to just to connect with people who like would never even follow you or like they've just seen your Instagram video or someone else shared it on their page. And I think it does, it, it really does save it, save its tool for when it's needed for things like this. And that's what I do. I shared the first video. Um, I think it was the week of um, Huntington's Disease Awareness Week. Um, back in May and I was like I was like crying and just like it was like really emotional first video and then like since then obviously it's been easier to share stuff and yeah I think the response has just been really amazing. I think that's the first time I ever saw your Instagram Robin so that's really cool that like the video that you're talking about is like the first time I ever followed your Instagram so there oh, you go yeah. that's the impact. <laughs> so cool. And like obviously, then obviously from that joining like this and every and meeting everyone and the ambassadors and stuff. So yeah, it's been amazing. 
I suppose <laughs> mine's probably social media as well. Um, and I I share on all platforms. So initially it was just Facebook because when I was 18, I wasn't allowed to do anything else. <laughs> Not allowed, but I didn't have, well, I think I had Instagram as well. So I probably shared a bit on there, but Facebook was all the rage when I was 18. But now I share on Facebook, Instagram. Um, I put things in my Twitter bio. And recently, like for this fundraiser, I actually shared it on LinkedIn, which I was absolutely terrified about because I was like, as a professional, like, should I be sharing this personal information? But I think I raised something like four or 500 pounds from sharing it on LinkedIn with people. So like, Amazing. I think it's just getting over that initial, oh, this is really scary to actually people being like, oh, we, we understand that you're human. And I think it's like anybody on any platform can see that, you know, you're just somebody trying to do something good. So yeah, definitely social media is the way to go. Um, I think I've used like, fundraising forms a few years ago but obviously with covid i think they kind of took a bit of a backseat in terms of like passing a form around the office and saying i'll sponsor you this yeah. much if that makes sense mm -hmm. um but use kind of fundraising sites as well to actually get you know collect the money um which has been really useful and it saves you i suppose collecting cash as well but i know everyone does it a bit differently mm -hmm. Mine's yeah been... now have you seen the way you can add the name add it into your facebook um, instagram bio yeah like the way I, i've got man on man and then like you can add it onto like you can like, add it into like like 10 other people like who was like and then it'll show on their page you know saying oh, like that right. i didn't know that you, which is which i thought was really good because i thought even if like the things on private all their followers will still see the link and then it'll get directed through to your page which is really good Mm, that's cool mm. I'm using uh, primarily social media and an email list right now and that's been uh, yeah I kind of have a group of customers and uh, I'll every so often do an in-person sale and I set up a little um, leave your email address here and I'll send you a free e-card or something just to incentivize people uh, and so I yeah usually collecting email addresses uh, and and uh, the other thing that's been really useful recently, too, is um, joining neighborhood community Facebook groups, mm -hmm. which I just kind of learned as a thing. And uh, it gives me access to my neighbors and people that I can do like hand delivery and porch drops to and that kind of thing. So that's been a really nice way to meet my neighbors and people who are close by. And I have actually found uh, one other woman who is in a, a similar, she's in the HD community as well. Um, and so I have made contact with, a, with, yeah, with someone who understands who's just a neighbor down the street. So that part's been great. That's amazing. That's, cool. yeah. that's one of those connections that you probably would have never done hadn't you done that. So that's amazing. Yeah. And a, a quick plug talking about um, some of the uh, fundraising sites, HDO now has the capability of doing your own community fundraiser through our website. And so if you're fundraising for specifically HDO, for example, all of the funds can go through there. You can have your story on there. You can um, do updates on Facebook directly through it. So it's kind of a neat platform. So then that way you're not having to, although we're connected with a lot of those other fundraising sites, it's already actually going into the fundraising goals of HDO. So you can keep track of all of that as well. And Carly, who unfortunately couldn't join us today, she used that platform for her fundraising as well. So um, that's something fun that we've brought on in the last year. Yeah, I think sometimes stuff like that it just makes it so much more easier, isn't it? Like mm. when you've not, not got loads of different like things to sort out for it. Mm -hmm. Seems a bit overwhelming at first when you've got like so many different things to set up and it is hard. It's nice to kind of have if you can consolidate some of those things and then hopefully you can bring it back each year so you're not having to recreate the wheel if you're doing something more on a um, on a periodic way or every other year or what have you. You kind of have that capture of who gave and what they gave and um, contact information. Oh, yeah, that's a really good idea. Yeah. It also means you can go back to people as well. I made like a, I think almost like a, I suppose it's a bit like an e-card thing yeah like and I yeah, sent it by yeah, email to, and I use everyone's email addresses and I said like oh thank you for donating and that was received quite well as well so it was nice to be able to say thank you back mm -hmm. um obviously I messaged people but yeah it was a good good way of using that because everyone's name was just on the on the list so on the given site absolutely absolutely
Well, what, so I'm gonna pick a little bit on Charlotte and Caitlin, since you are, um, have done fundraisers, at least to some kind of completion. Robin, I'll ask you some other story or questions here since you're in the thick of things, but what was something that surprised you when you started doing your fundraiser? And um, how did you maybe overcome some of those fears that you had? We talked a little bit about the fear of people not giving, but also maybe even the fear of completing the tasks. Uh, so so how did what were you surprised about? What were you most nervous about specifically for your fundraiser? And then how did you overcome those things? Well, that came go first. <laughs> <laughs> something, something I was surprised about. Um, I think about how, um, I, not to be discour discouraging, but just how much work it was. Like when I, when I set out, it was kind of like, I'm going to do this and then this is going to happen and that's going to be the result. And then the learning process of, of figuring out how that actually happens. Um, so I think I was just surprised by, um, all the different facets, but then over, overcame it. I mean, with the my family's support, um, overcame that also with realizing that these were things that I was curious about anyways. And so I, I was getting to dig deeper into, yeah, learning different skills. And um, I think overcoming the fear of things, um, I mean, the, the, I think initially my this, the, my love of greeting cards and paper, where it was like, well, I'll order the cards, and worst case scenario, I now have two hundred cards that I don't know what to do with, and I'll you know I'll have cards for the rest of my life, um, and so it it uh, and then that first you know that first batch of of two hundred cards that I ordered, the fact that those sold was like, oh, okay. I, I can do this. I can figure it out. It's worth taking the steps. It's worth taking the next steps. So, um, yeah, just turning to family for support, turning to my community for support when I needed it, and then taking small incremental risks that that have been paying off so far, thanks to that support. So. Sorry to put you on the spot. Yeah, I'm just always yeah. conscious. I'm always, <laughs> sometimes I like to talk. Yeah, so I'm sorry to put you on the spot. Um, but yeah, I suppose what I'm I was most surprised about was I think just I think we've talked about it, but just people's generosity, but also people's curiosity as well. Um, so like people like I've obviously by sharing people ask me questions about HD or they'll ask me about the fundraiser, and I think that's really nice that people engage and. I really want to be involved and I think it's I found a passion for then then for sharing so I think I wasn't necessarily aware of that before fundraising so I think by people asking me questions and by sharing that first time I was actually like oh this is actually like I really enjoy doing this or I enjoy talking about and um, educating people about HD so um yeah and I think I think that maybe feeds into a little bit of worry as well because I think I've already said I'm a bit of an oversharer so sometimes I'm like well how much is relevant to share but I've just learned that actually like if people have asked they it's you know they want to know so I'm I suppose always tell them yeah I always tell them whatever I'm comfortable with at the time depending on who they are um but yeah I suppose yeah and and the feeling I was quite surprised at the feeling of accomplishment as well obviously I mean we all do things in our lives that we're proud of um but I thought you know a lot of people do fundraising but it's that feeling at the end of actually like oh my goodness like I've raised, raised this money not matter how much it is and it really feels good and like I really feel like like it's something I've, I should, I'm proud of and and it's so uncomfortable sometimes as a human to say that about yourself like to be like I'm really proud of myself but it I think because you're helping so many other people and you, and you don't necessarily know who you're helping it does give you that sense of pride so yeah and I think I think some of the some of the things that I took away with what you just said too was about it was about sharing the story and raising awareness and I think sometimes that's a big obstacle because of being so personal especially in the Huntington mm -hmm. yeah definitely I'm not wanting to just be so outward and there are a variety of different comfortability levels, especially as you make personal connections, people may not know that you are impacted by Huntington's disease. And um, so it's kind of finding that balance of 
what are you comfortable sharing? And I think pointing to resources um, to maybe be prepared for some of those conversations as you're explaining. So you don't get mm -hmm. caught off guard and share something that you're not prepared to share with strangers or people even close to, 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 close to you. Um, and so you have that factual information, but then as you get more used to it, kind of deciding, are you more comfortable with sharing some more of your personal story? Um, and it's fine yeah. either way. And and people will honestly respect that. And kind of like you said, if they're asking, it's because they want to know more, but it's more about how do you kind of protect yourself so that way you're prepared for that. Yeah, I think it was quite interesting when we did our group fundraiser in that like everybody shared on different levels. So there was people who didn't even share like, you know, yeah, just shared on different levels and didn't necessarily share as much as me and they and they didn't even go into any detail but people still connected with, the, with them because they wanted to support them and that was like totally okay and like it, I think it's important to have those different levels of I suppose sharing because yeah I think it's really important to have those different levels of people sharing the story and you know everybody's different at the end of the day we're all we all view things differently and see things differently and we all all of every single family even people in families like think about HD and, and I suppose live their life with HD in different ways and I think that's quite powerful as well um, in its own way if that makes sense. Absolutely in fact that's one of the sessions we'll be doing at our, our international congress coming up in March is about how people in the same family nucleus answer questions in very different ways and so you can really see how people's personal perspectives can change, even though there's similar facts, if you will, for how HD has impacted the family itself. So Robin, with yours coming up in February, what are you nervous about? <laughs> and what, what are you thinking that you'll do to kind of overcome some of those nerves? So I am. It's. I think today's a um, hundred days until we go until we like set off for our flight to, to Africa, and even though like training's going well and you know I feel like my body's in like the shape of, like really like the fitness level is where it's at at this point, but that fear is like it's still there and as it's getting closer I'm getting a bit more apprehensive and things but you know. For me, it just it's gonna be it's gonna be the hardest thing I'm gonna do, you know, physically and mentally. You know, like it's six full days climbing, um, like camping each day. You know, a lot of altitude sickness and stuff. So, but that's like what that's what I'm going for. You know, like to be pushed out my comfort zone and to like kind of, I think a lot of the time, you know, we're Huntington's and not even just Huntington's, but like if people are struggling or you know like they've got mental health problems or whatever, like having something to focus on is really really helping me you know like it's keeping me fit it's keeping me in the gym it's keeping me focused in like a really really positive way so even though I'm really nervous about it I feel like it's probably like the most strong me mind state of mind will be and my body for that at that period of time so yeah I'm really excited I'm not excited that I won't get a shower for six days <laughs> 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 dedication yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was like what are we gonna do like there's no showers <laughs> oh man you may not even be about it but it'll that, be but... yeah yeah I know um, I was like we've got to shoot a tent together for six days <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a good job we're really good friends <laughs> <laughs> So as we kind of wrap things up, what would be a piece of advice that you would give to someone who is either interested in starting a fundraiser or um, maybe are kind of, is kind of on the fence? What would you what would you say to them? I think fundraising is always, always, always a good idea, no matter how mm -hmm. big or small or whatever your charity you want to do it for. It's yeah, it's just it's always a nice a nice thing to do, and I think you know everyone should kind of like try and give back in some way or another if they can 
Totally. I say go for it. Good. It's been so enriching and so um, uh, great for getting me connected to community here. And uh, yeah, it's just been, I can't say enough good things about it. And I think that the like no amount too small also, it's just any, any amount I think is completely worth it. I think I'd emulate what the girls have said in that it's yeah, no time's a bad time to fundraise because it brings you so much as a inner like I don't know like inner peace and inner like purpose and even like no matter how small or big um and I've made so many friends I even like met someone doing the great north run and she was wearing uh, the same top as me and I was like oh my goodness and I ran up ran after her so like I don't know like I would never have met her or connected with her if I wasn't doing the run or I don't know even just just something tiny um you never know who might connect with you or you never know who you who you might impact by sharing your story or even just you know doing doing a fundraiser so yeah just definitely go for it absolutely and lean on the charity that you're fundraising for as well we are all here mm -hmm. to help support that cause so we can help share we can provide information resources um a listening ear we can connect you with other people like these fabulous women who have done um fundraising but there is a community of support around you and um it's just an it's it's an amazing way to get involved and you can do it at whatever level you feel comfortable with it doesn't have to be something grandiose it can be something similar to uh, you know at an event yep kids who do lemonade stands we have people who and just put out sale, like I would love to do a cake sale I think it's so fun get to eat loads of cake <laughs> what's well, better than cake them, you can't eat them <laughs> <laughs> well I'd be like I'd, I'd go home with no money yeah. <laughs> like, one cake for me one cake for you <laughs> so if you're in the Liverpool area and doing a bake sale contact Robin she'll be right over with that <laughs> She'll buy all your projects. <laughs> yeah, you take part. Oh, but yeah, it, you know, it can be something really simple, but the important things are to to do something that you really feel passionate about and giving back is such an amazing way to feel to feed the soul, as everybody has said today. Um, any last thoughts before we wrap up? I don't think so. Okay. Well, thank you all so much for sharing your stories. Thank you all for watching. And it is the time of year for the giving season. So um, if you'd like to get more involved with giving to HDO, please contact us. Or if you have any thoughts or ideas, we're all here for you. But thank you all so much for today. And we look forward to seeing you at the next HDO commu or HDU Community Stories.